Technology has advanced to the point that it's actually a quality of life upgrade for birding. And it can not only help you add more species to your life list, it can also help you track it. Hello everyone, I'm your host Grant Reddick. So you've just gotten into birding and you're wondering the best way to track your bird species and your life list. Or maybe you've been birding for a while, but you can't seem to keep your birding list organized and easily accessible. When I first started birding, I kept track of each trip in one notebook, my life list was kept in a binder, and all my state, county, and month lists were all kept in other mediums. And while I've always been a fan of having a notebook and pen in hand for birding trips, the extra bulk and the lack of an easy way to track everything has caused me to go completely digital with my bird tracking. The best news is that technology has advanced to the point that it's actually a quality of life upgrade for birding. And it can not only help you add more species to your life list, it can also help you track it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to your device's app store. If you're an Apple user, that will be the Apple App Store. And if you have an Android like myself, that will be the Google Play Store. Search for Cornell Labs eBird and hit the download button. Now that you've downloaded the app, Let's move on to creating your eBird account. Open the app and click on sign up or create account. Take advantage of the preferences section to tailor your eBird experience, such as setting up notifications for rare bird alerts or updates from your favorite birding locations. Okay, so now that you've downloaded the app and created our account, let's move on to the fun part, listing bird species. Tap on the submit observations icon. Enter the date and the time if it's different than what auto populates. If you're actively birding, whether it be stationary or traveling, make sure the record track is selected. This will calculate the time and the distance traveled so you don't have to keep track. Now press start checklist to get started. This will automatically bring up all the likely species for your current GPS location. These are all based upon submitted lists in your area. Bird species are listed by default by a smart sort, but this can be changed to the ornithological taxonomy order as well. You can also search for a species using the common name or by using alpha banding codes if you know them. Once you pull up an individual species, you'll have several options at this point. If you're actively birding and you're keeping an extensive list, you can add the number of species seen here. This can be continually updated throughout your trip to capture the most accurate totals for your day. If you're engaged in another activity where birding is not your main focus, but you're still keeping a list of the bird species seen, you can use the present checkbox, which will mark that you saw at least one of the species, but you didn't have an accurate total. If you want to ensure that you have the correct species and you've downloaded the Merlin Bird ID app, you can click on the icon to the right and it will take you directly to the Merlin Bird ID app for verification. If you have any detailed notes that you'd like to include, you can include them in the details section below. Finally, at the bottom, you can add a breeding code or a behavior code. This gives a specific observation about the bird species, such as whether it was carrying nesting material or actively building a nest. So what if you've identified a bird species that's not on the main list that comes up for your area? Congratulations, you've spotted an uncommon or possibly rare bird species for your area. You will need to manually search for the bird's name and it will come up with a red circle under the name, letting you know that the bird is rare, infrequent, or unreported. If you do find yourself in this situation, be sure to include as much information as possible in the details section of the species form. eBird will typically email you in regards to any rare bird species, and they'll be looking for detailed information to report the observation. Getting a photo or a video recording is always the best way to confirm a sighting. Once you've finished your birding trip or day, you can click review. This will take you to the final details of your sightings. The first option will ask you to choose your location. This will bring up several hotspots or pre-entered birding locations. You can also add this location as a personal location, which will allow you to go back later and create a list of all the birds that you've seen in that location. Next, you'll choose an observation type. This will be how you were birding when you observed the species. If you traveled a distance of more than 30 meters or 90 feet, you will choose traveling. If you traveled less than 30 meters, it will be considered stationary. The last option that you can choose is incidental. If birding wasn't your primary focus, but you still counted bird species, you can choose incidental. I use this on days when I'm home working, but I'm still counting bird species when I look out the window or when I take the dog out for a walk. The final option available is only used for specialized and project specific protocols. 
Finally, you must answer whether you're submitting a checklist of all the birds seen. This option is automatically marked no if you choose incidental. Congratulations, you just submitted a checklist that can be used to monitor species in the local birding community, as well as reference for your own listing purposes. Now that you've created your account and submitted your first checklist, let's explore how to view our data and other data from your local birding community. If you click on checklists, this will bring up all the checklists that you've ever submitted. As you can see, I've submitted 515 checklists in total. In the submitted checklist section, you can go back and view all the information that you submitted for each list. If you start a list but forget to submit it, it will be under the not submitted section. Next, take a moment to familiarize yourself with the explore section. This is where you can discover recent sightings in your area and plan your birding expeditions. It will give you the species observed within your area within a specific time frame. This can be changed from 1 to 30 miles and from 1 to 30 days. It will also show all the birding hotspots in your area along with the tracking which hotspot you visited or listed species from and from the ones that you haven't. At the bottom, you can click more extensive lists that will take you to ebird.com. This includes target species, rare bird alerts, as well as the top 100 eBird users in your area. As you can see, I'm slacking this year. Finally, head over to My eBird. By default, this section will bring up your current location and county. It will show you the species that you've counted so far for the year in that area, as well as how it compares to past years at that point. It will also give you totals that you had in the same month in past years. If you'd like to see this information for another area or your complete totals for the world, you can click the location icon at the top. This will give you several options such as world, country, and state. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide on using the Cornell Labs eBird app. Remember, each observation that you submit contributes to our understanding of bird populations and migration patterns. So get out there and let eBird do the heavy lifting on your list while you focus on the birds. If you found this guide to be helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more birding tips. Until next time, get out and get birding.